We're gonna now attempt the snow cone problem. And the snow cone problem uh, is challenging mainly because of the derivative that you have to take in order to figure out sort of what the optimal dimensions are. So we're given a few pieces of information. So we're told that we have a snow cone shaped cup that holds approximately 118 cubic centimeters of water. We're asked to find the height and radius of the snow cone cup that will require the least amount of paper. So we're trying to minimize. I'm just going to write a note to the side. And if we're trying to minimize the amount of paper used, we're probably trying to minimize surface area. So for those of you who don't know, a traditional snow cone comes in a cone, something like this, but you wouldn't actually have the base of the cone uh, because that's where you put the icy part. And you know, there's a height to our snow cone and a radius to our snow cone. And those are the dimensions we're looking for. So we know the volume of a cone is one third pi r squared h and in this particular case we're told that the volume is 118 cubic centimeters so i'm going to just write 118 equals one third pi r squared h and we'll come back to that in a minute now as i said i'm trying to minimize surface area so the surface area formula of a cone uh, is typically the base pi r squared plus the lateral area or the you know sort of cone part and that formula is pi r and then basically times the slant height and it's basically Pythagorean theorem to find that slant height so it's r squared plus h squared and the square root of that whole thing now as we mentioned earlier a snow cone doesn't have a base so we don't actually need this part because there's no base to our figure there's just the lateral area. And if I notice, I have multiple r's and one h. So I'm going to want to rewrite my volume formula to figure out what h is equal to. So I'm going to do that now. So I can say, OK, um, 118 times 3 is um, 354. And then I'm going to divide by pi r squared, and that will get me what h is. So I'm going to take that and plug it in for h. And I'm going to then get a function for the surface area with respect to just r. So I have pi r, the square root of r squared, plus 354 over pi r squared, all squared. Now I'm going to want to try and do a little bit of simplifying here where I substitute it in um, for h because that's uh, not as pleasant and I typically want a sort of power term if I can and so to do that I also want to be careful about rounding too much so I could put that 354 over pi squared into my calculator but I actually don't want to because I don't want to round anything if I don't have to so I'm gonna just sort of distribute I'm gonna apply my squared to the various numbers in that so I basically have 354 over pi which is just a number and I'm going to square that. And then I have this r squared in the denominator. Well, if we remember, 1 over r squared would be the same thing as r to the negative 2. And if we raise a power to a power, we basically have that power the number of times that it got raised to. So that would actually be an r to the negative fourth power. And now this is in a form that I'm somewhat comfortable taking the derivative of. It's not the easiest derivative because if you notice I'm gonna need to use product rule so uh, we're gonna give us some space actually I'll switch colors so we're gonna now take the derivative so we have s prime of r and to do product rule sort of here's one piece and then here's my other piece so I'll start with the pi r because that's a little easier so the derivative of that would just be pi times the square root termed r squared plus the 
So whole 354 over pi squared times r to the negative 4. All right, then that gets added to pi r, because that doesn't change, and now the derivative of this square root term. Now I have a function underneath the square root, so I actually have chain rule going on here. So the derivative of the square root, remember we can think of a square root of a number as that value to the one half power. So I'm gonna bring down a one half. Everything under the radical would stay the same. 54 over pi all squared r to the negative 4 and then minus 1 from that power would make it the negative 1 half power and so that's my outer derivative and then we need to times that by the inner derivative so the inner derivative and I'm going to put that in parentheses and I've sort of run out of room so I'm going to stick it below in sort of bad math writing r squared would be 2r plus this is this sort of funky 354 over pi squared is just a number, remember? But I have a power of a negative r to the negative fourth, so I would bring down the negative four, times it by that constant. That's this crazy sort of irrational number. And that r is gonna be to the negative fifth power, because we minus one. And that whole inner function derivative goes in parentheses, and that's gonna be times. So we can sort of imagine that goes right there, and if I had a very long piece of paper, I'd write it all out. Now this is a monster of a derivative, and we want to know where s prime of r equals zero. And so here's a good point to go to my Desmos graphing calculator. And so in my Desmos graphing calculator, I already pre-entered that really long derivative, and I notice that I have two zeros. I have a negative 4.303 and a positive 4.303. Well, I'm dealing with a dimension, so a negative value doesn't really make sense, so my domain needs to be positive. So the only critical value I care about is that 4.303. So I'm gonna go back to my work really quickly. And so R would equal 4.303. Now, if I wanna double check that I'm dealing with a minimum, remember, I can sort of do a derivative, first derivative test, so S prime. I have my critical point, FP 4.303, with a minimum value of zero. And if I go back and look at this graph, notice that before 4.3, my derivative is negative, and afterwards, it's positive. And so my derivative is going from negative to positive, which means my function is going from decreasing to increasing, therefore has a minimum value at 4.303. And I could double check that by graphing the original function. Don't ever be afraid to do that, especially with these optimization problems. And if I notice, my original function is way up here, and I can see, yep, it hits a low point right there at 4.303. And so I know, congratulations, I found my minimum value. Now, going back to the original problem, I'm asked for the height and radius that will minimize the amount of paper. So I need to take my R value and plug it back into this volume formula, um, since I know I have 118 cubic centimeters to find H. So um, I remember H is equal to the whole 354 over pi R squared. And so h would be equal to 354 pi, and then that 4.303 squared, which is about 6.086 centimeters. We're dealing in centimeters here. And so um, I can now answer my question. Uh, the cup will have a radius of 4.303 centimeters and a height of 6.086 centimeters in order to minimize the amount of paper used to create 
the cup. And we always remember that in our sentence, we should make sure we include our units and what we were being asked to find. And that is how we solve the snow cone problem.